Hey, what's going on, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, aka Sinister Charlie. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I saw this video pop up, and I'm like, yeah, it seems up my alley. Uh, I I've done a cycle before. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'll be 40 in November, uh, and I did a cycle when I was 26, 27. I think it was like right after I got out of the Navy because I was like, oh, I want to get big. And uh, I did. I got very big. It's the first time I've ever weighed over 200 pounds. Uh, and mostly muscle. Well, probably some fat in there. I wasn't like being very, uh, uh, I wasn't eating uh, a proper diet. I wasn't eating a balanced diet back then. And I was like in my, you know, mid 20s, you know, what the hell. Um, but yeah, I wanted to check this out. Uh, this is by Jeff Nippard. And I think I'm saying that right. Nippard. Jeff uh, Nippard. Yeah, so we're going to see what the, this guy has to say. Uh, people have been watching it and liking it. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll check it out. Um, I, I I never had any really bad adverse effects to steroids. Then again, I only did one cycle, and it was pills. I wasn't uh, injecting anything. Uh, but, yeah, it works, if you want to know. But uh, Yeah, anyway, uh, we'll get into it. Uh, get, go. The problem with steroids is that they work. They work. Thank like, you. <laughs> they really work. That's probably irresponsible for me to say. Well, they if do. we're going to talk about the steroid epidemic, we need to do it honestly. Hey, that's Sam Sulek. That, that guy's ridiculous. Uh, whew. He's going to have... If you're doing like steroids like Sam, you know, sorry. Responsible uh, for me to say, but if um, we're going to talk about the steroid epidemic... We like he's going to have a lot of joint problems if he doesn't like level off. You know what I mean? If he doesn't do it responsibly. Like, um, who is it? Uh, who's that? Lightweight. Who's that guy? Damn, I can't remember. But he has problems. I'll remember. We need later. to do it honestly. Here's a three week trend cycle update for you guys. Buying trend in Thailand. <laughs> Steroids build muscle way faster than something like creatine. It's not even close. If you started taking five grams of creatine every day for a year straight, you'd add about two pounds of extra muscle. If you started taking steroids at a normal bodybuilding dose, you'd probably add about 20 pounds of extra muscle that year. But it could be more depending on your genetics and how much you take. I'm a lifetime natural bodybuilder, and these are my testosterone levels right now. 485 nanograms per deciliter. That's right around the middle of the normal range for someone my age. This is bodybuilder Chase Irons, the world's most honest enhanced bodybuilder. I think he I also know had him. blood work done this month. Where do you think his testosterone levels are? Maybe double mine or triple mine? Nope. His levels are literally off the charts. Jeebus. The test maxes out at 10,000 nanograms per deciliter. Good God. And his testosterone was higher than that. <laughs> he openly admits to taking a lot of gear, and this shows just how big the gap between natural and enhanced can get. More people are taking... Yeah, I don't mind if you do, uh, you're do. you doing that stuff and you're honest about it. That's that's great, and you should be honest about it. Uh, but people like the liver king and stuff, that was disgusting and gross because you're giving... You're giving like uh, a, a younger generation who doesn't know any better false hope about like being natural. It's like you're not going to get that big being natural it, unless you're like unless it's just genetics like a Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is like a, a, a genetic freak. So uh, maybe like a Bo Jackson, even though I think he might have been on some stuff. Who knows? I don't know. Steroids now <laughs> than ever before. Why is that? Well, I think it's because more and more fitness influencers are opening up about their anabolic use. In theory, this honesty is a good thing. That's because anyone watching would be able to adjust their own expectations <clears throat> for their goals. There you go. If they're natural and they know their favorite fitness influencer isn't, hey, they'd be guy. able to lower their own there's, standards. There's that disgusting, horrible piece of garbage. Not the guy on the left. Uh, the, the liver king. Uh, gross. Disgusting person. Uh, horrible. Uh, sellout. Uh, there's a lot of things you could say about that guy. And say, I hate him. Okay, I'm not a big well, fan. Now I know that result isn't achievable for me. But this kind of backfired. A lot of people didn't lower their expectations. They just started taking steroids. And the bigger problem is a lot of fitness influencers are hey, only ever partially Martin? transparent. They say they're on steroids and they show their gains, but they rarely, if ever, show any of the bad stuff. So the only logical conclusion is that steroids are amazing. But that's misleading. So to help you understand exactly what happens to your body when you take steroids, let's inject some juice together and see what happens next. Good and bad. This is testosterone enanthate. It's one of the most common forms of steroids that people take. It's basically just a testosterone molecule with a carboxyl group attached and dissolved in a vegetable oil. I'm gonna really pretend like I know what the hell he's talking about. 
that you can inject it. There's also some kind of aromatic compound like benzoyl benzoate in here, which prevents bacterial growth and helps the testosterone dissolve better. When you inject the needle into your muscle, a bubble of oil is squeezed in between the individual muscle fibers, yeah, I've never which spreads this. out and forms this elongated shape. The testosterone molecules then slowly make their way into the bloodstream over the course of several hours. There, enzymes called esterases cleave off that carboxyl group and then the testosterone is carried by molecules called binding proteins to the muscle where it enters a single muscle cell. Now its job is to make that muscle cell bigger. And if that's all that steroids did, that'd be sweet and I'd be on them. But there's a lot more that happens. For one, your heart is also a muscle. So, of course, the same thing happens there. Yep. The testosterone enters your heart cells and tells your DNA to make your heart bigger. Having a big heart sounds like a good thing, oh, it but it's really not. <laughs> when your heart grows, especially one compartment called the left ventricle, the extra bulk actually makes it harder for your heart to squeeze and relax. This means your heart won't be able to pump blood as effectively, which increases your risk of heart failure. Now, I want to say, I'm not the health police. You can do whatever you want with your Thank own you. body. And I've got no problem with people who inhale it. But I want people to at least be aware of exactly what you're doing and the full effect it has, good and bad. For example, not many people realize that steroids affect your brain. To explain this, I wanted to find someone with scientific education and first-hand experience with steroids. Sorry, excuse me. Also, I'm just back from the gym, so if I'm sweating, I, I'm sorry. I'm a sweaty boy. I'm sweaty boys in the house. Hey. Ah, oh, hi. <laughs> Did you hear me okay, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Steroids can cause many people really high levels of anxiety. It's dose-dependent. It's also compound-dependent. Yeah. Things like trend cause way more anxiety than other milder compounds like prenone. So this is fun. I haven't admitted this yet, but it's not a particularly crazy admission. Uh, I recently took a, a, a validated, empirically validated, scientifically based scale for anxiety. And actually currently, right now, um, I have severe anxiety disorder. It's it probably the most... Uh, I have the same thing, but I think it comes from my time in Iraq is mostly where that anxiety comes from. And I have scream yourself awake nightmares. So that's that's different. That's different. The steroids probably didn't help. Severe type of anxiety disorder, short of like panic disorder. And uh, that's actually right now, as I, as I talk, that's what I have. And uh, another one, uh, also another psychological side effect. Some types of your intelligence degrade over time with steroid use. Brain to work This is good? tested in people currently using steroids and people who used to use steroids. Most people, they're just totally unaware that steroids have that potential effect on IQ reduction. And since IQ or just intelligence is such a global quality that you probably want to hang out and, uh, to most of it as much as you have. Yeah, I guess it's a real serious thing to trade off. And that tracks with the science. This 2021 study took 3D MRI scans of the brains of over 200 weightlifters. About half of them were natty, the other half enhanced. The scans revealed that the lifters who took steroids had a significantly bigger brain age gap. That means when they looked at the natural brains, their brain age matched their actual age. But the brains of the enhanced lifters looked much older than they should look for someone their age. Yeah. Their brains were aging. I mean, that's, it depends. You gotta, you know, you do your uh, risk management about what you want. Like some people, I, I honestly, I was thinking about doing a cycle again, like recently. I don't know. I might in the next couple of years when I'm uh, starting, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Faster than they should be. And the psychology of steroids is fascinating. Most people take steroids because they want to look Ooh. bigger and feel better about the way they look. You. And I get it. I want to look bigger and feel better too. And steroids will make you look bigger, but they might not help you feel any better about the way you look. They actually could make your body dysmorphia worse. That's because a lot of people think if they just start enhancing, then they'll look how they want. But just because you take gear doesn't mean you're going to look like SIBA. And then when you eventually come off, you'll quickly lose a good chunk of the size yeah. that you put on and feel smaller than ever. Yeah, when I did my cycle, uh, I like I said, I was I, I was mid mid twenties, an idiot, and uh, I was not keeping up with my nutrition. Uh, and then I, I went from like two fifteen, that was my height, and then I dropped like way back down to one ninety, then to like one eighty, and that's where I'm sitting at right now. I'm I'm around one eighty. Uh, yeah, you got to keep up with it; it'll go away real quick. Ever. At that point, it becomes near impossible not to go back on, take even more steroids, and the cycle continues. Again, that wouldn't really be a problem if steroids didn't impact pretty much every system in your body, but they do. After you inject, some of that testosterone is converted into a hormone called DHT, which causes hair follicles to shrink faster. 
This is why so many. That didn't really happen to me. Only I did one cycle, so maybe that it didn't really affect me too much. Bodybuilders are bald in their 20s. <coughs> Some testosterone is also converted into estrogen, which can increase breast tissue formation in men, leading to soft, puffy nipples, puffy also nipples. known as gyno. The most reliable way to get rid of gyno is surgery, and while most people will take other drugs to prevent that conversion to estrogen, almost every bodybuilder you know has had to deal with gyno at some point. Yeah. Injecting testosterone also lets your testicles know that there's more yeah, than that enough testosterone to, to go around, <laughs> so they shrink to about yeah. one half of their usual size. The shrink Honestly, who wants big, huge balls anyway? quickly shuts down Getting your body's natural ability to make its own testosterone, which is why some people need to inject testosterone for the rest of their life. Steroids also make sebaceous glands on your skin grow bigger, which causes them to overproduce a sticky, oily substance called sebum. Sebum moisturizes and protects your skin in normal amounts, but causes acne when overproduced. I didn't have a Steroid lot of acne. users will try to combat this by taking other drugs for acne <laughs> treatment, but then they have their own side effects. Sorry, what would be me. a side effect that... Um, most people like wouldn't be aware of until you've kind of done it yeah it's a good question there are a few of those i can think of because anabolic steroids are mostly gotten in at least the united states uh in canada through underground laboratories some of the gear you get is like damn near farmer grade it goes in smooth as butter never yeah. does anything no inflammation some of the gear goes in there and uh boy does it uh does it mess you up and i have been personally hospitalized at least once for um a non infected but insanely immune responsive abscess my quad was like half a foot out to one side Jesus. i've had friends get hospitalized for abscesses the doctors have to cut your skin open they have to drain it and lastly the term roid rage but it's really aggression and it, it very infrequently displays itself as actual violent acts but the thoughts you get on steroids are disturbing you might I didn't really have that when I was doing uh, roids. Uh, I only did one cycle, like I said. Uh, could depend on the kind you're doing, but uh, uh, I mean, if you're a dick, you're going to be a bigger dick on roids. That's that's the way it's been explained to me, and I'm not really a dick, so uh, I try to treat everybody nicely. So I don't know. You might like war movies and stuff, but if there's a war movie playing in your head every single second you're awake and asleep. It gets a little old after a while, but you have big muscles, so I guess that's cool. It is cool. So I tell the cookie crumbles. Let me get a second opinion. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Oof. Hello. Oh, man. hey. No plates. More yo, dates. Yo. A no pretty common reported anecdote is feeling like you just hit puberty again for the first, like, Six to eight oh, weeks, yeah. it literally feels like you're 16 years old again. Yep. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, it's bad. Not <laughs> it's great. It's probably not a good thing overall <laughs> because you're now an adult with the, like, libido of a raging 16-year-old and you have responsibilities and things to keep up with and all you can think about is your perpetually erect penis, basically. Yeah, it's all big. Which is throbbing, not ideal. Um, increased big. probability of injury. This is sometimes talked about when your strength is skyrocketing your connective tissue cannot maintain the pace of your muscular strength and often this will lead to unnecessary injury in the gym because you know if your bench goes up 50 pounds in six weeks like you're not <laughs> typically you're not gonna like hold back you're gonna keep pushing because this weight feels like a feather now you're gonna you know go as far as it can take you but your connective tissue is not keeping up with that pace and this you'll see often bodybuilders that end up with Ah, uh, brutal injuries. It's hard to say how much steroids shorten your lifespan, but they definitely do. One 2024 paper followed over a thousand steroid users for 11 years with an well, average age of 27. Age, yeah, During the same time frame, they also followed 60,000 people of the same age, but not on steroids. 2.8% of the steroid users had died by the follow-up, while only 1% of the non-steroid eh. users had died. That's a lot of... Well, also, I, I don't know if it takes into account, like, what did they die from the steroids? Or did they die from, like, getting in fights because of the steroids? Or, like, uh, did they die in a gun, like, a gunfight or something, a shooting? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't really go into that, does it? Of excess deaths, which led the authors to note that the excess death rate in this young adult population is striking. Of course, this depends on the dose that you're taking. I think what a lot of people think is, 
I'm not going to go crazy with the juice. Like I, I'm just going to do a little like sports TRT or whatever, like 150, 200 milligrams uh, a week. How do you feel about that? I think the word TRT is very conflated with like baby cycle essentially at this point. When you're yeah. on TRT, even if it looks on paper like a normal total testosterone, it is not representative of what you could do naturally. So even if you're on like, you know, low dose TRT, on paper, you could define it as such, but it's certainly like, you're essentially on mini enhancement territory perpetually, which I'm not to say that that's bad, because that, that's almost like the boat I fall into myself, essentially. It's just a matter of managing the risk to reward on it, and if you feel you it go. is worthwhile for yourself, consider it of all of the factors that underlie it. Would you say there is a healthy way to use steroids? Uh, Healthier. There are, so everything is a spectrum in this case. So there are healthier and less healthy ways. There you go. And if you want to use steroids in a healthier way, then what you're going to do is start with very small amounts of them, check your blood work, do various uh, heart scans and, and procedure, consult with a professional coach who does this for a living, have a medical doctor on, on retainer to make sure that you're getting uh, every several months or twice a year blood work. You check your blood pressure all the time. You cycle properly coming on and off. You take as little gear as will accomplish the effect you're interested in. If you do that, you can definitely do it healthier than not. But, you know, there are ways to race a car and design a race car and design the suit and the crumple zones that make it safer. But as soon as you pass 200 miles an hour, safer is the term. It's not safe. It was never safe. Yeah. And so no, steroids is safe, less man. safe almost always <laughs> than not taking steroids. But you can make it very, very safe or you can make it pretty roll the dice risky. The real big decision is on how you approach it. I notice people at like a really young age coming up to me and being like, hey, like I might hop on, like, you know, I've been training for a while now. Yeah, people have asked me that before. And it's like, um, I would say at least get like three years of working out and maybe five. It depends if you're just starting out. Uh, no, just keep going until you can't gain any more muscle. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, like five years, I think is good if you're working out for four or five years, in my opinion. Um, and you're just, you're not getting bigger than yeah. Oh, like I, I, teenagers. Do but like with me, I, I sorry to pause it again, but I, I was working out. I, I, I joined the Navy when I was 19 and I've been working out off and on ever since. And I'm, uh, I'm 39 now, I'll be 40 in November. So yeah, you gotta, I don't know, I, I would say, work out until you're not gaining any more muscle or gaining any more weight or whatever your goal is you know that would be my advice you have like an age in mind where it's like this is where you know you're old enough to even like consider it and before that just figure out your training and diet yeah there's a couple things that go into that one is some kinds of steroids close, uh, close your growth plates early and yeah. uh, that means it'll prevent you from reaching an adult height. Some men don't stop growing until they're 22 years old. And uh, if you start taking it when you're 16, you're probably going to be a short king for much longer than you anticipate. Well, actually, a shorter king than you ended up uh, should have be become with your genetics. And, um, you know, to almost the same group of people to whom jacked uh, lifestyle is important, being as tall as possible is also important, seemingly. Yeah. Another thing is the brain develops in very, very high level ways. Uh, well into your late 20s and then subtle ways through your entire lifespan. And so until about your mid 20s, I would say there's a high probability that uh, steroids will stunt your brain development to a significant extent. And so I would say my cutoff age generally as the conversation for responsible medically supervised steroid use for serious goal by a serious individual begins at age 25. The answer I usually give is like get at least 10 years of natural training under your belt because right, you'll have figured out what works for your body. And then from there, you know, you'll also by default be at least in your like mid twenties. You know, most people don't start lifting until they're at least, you know, in their mid teens. So, you know, it kind of ticks both of those boxes. And so, yeah, I, I always encourage people. It's like, have you been training hard and smart for 10 years? If not, then I don't think it's decision time for you yet. And I'll be honest, there have been several moments in my own bodybuilding career when enhancing has been very tempting, even now, especially with the fitness standards increasing rapidly and more and more fitness influencers juicing. And I think the standards have shifted so much since, yeah. you know, oh, we yeah. started out like six. Yeah, I, I honestly, I look in the mirror and I go, not. I always go not good enough. And I, I have body dysmorphia like really bad where I go, it's just, I, I get pissed at myself when I look in the mirror and I'm like, ugh, it's still not good enough. It's never good enough. And then I look at pictures like from 10 years ago 
you know, when when I was on roids, uh, <clears throat> uh, and I was like, God damn, I was I was, I was big, I was big, I was big boy, <laughs> two fifteen. I'll never reach two hundred again without him. So, I, I, in my opinion, that's what I, that's what I think. Six years ago, like. I was in the natty or not conversation as a physique that's like almost too good, and now six six now years like later, small, it's like bro. it's like you're you're the guy who doesn't lift but knows, sh you know. <laughs> but instead of enhancing, I've decided to do something different. I keep thinking maybe I've reached my natural limit yeah, for muscle big, growth, dude. but you're, have you're I good. actually? Am I actually at my natty limit, or have I just not been training as hard and smart as I could be? I wasn't going to reveal this, but this year I'm doing an experiment with McMaster University here in Canada to see how much muscle it's possible for me to build naturally this deep into my lifting journey. If I do everything perfectly, can I still make gains naturally? So for this entire year, I've been doing everything 100% perfectly in the gym. I'm tracking every single set, taking the last set of every exercise to true technical failure, I'm not skipping any sets or any workouts. I'm also committing 100% to my diet. I haven't missed a single day tracking in macro factor, and I've hit my calorie and protein goal every single day. He's obviously uh, more on the professional level of uh, nutrition and stuff, but uh, I, what I say is that just eat more. If you're just starting out, just eat more protein than carbs. And in uh, and all, all, all honesty, if you're trying to get bigger, you want those carbs. You want good carbs, you know, you like your oats and your... Uh, vegetables and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I I would, if you're just starting out, I really wouldn't even worry about carbs too much. I'd worry about calories, you know, that too. Yeah, those macro things, I don't, I don't even get it. Well, then, <laughs> I don't even I'll be sharing my full that. results at the end of this year, but I can say that I've definitely made some solid gains already. This doesn't always show up as well on camera, but I've gotten more compliments about having put on some solid size at my local gym than I've gotten in years. But similar to me, what happens to a lot of guys is that they think they're at their natty limit and only steroids will help, when in reality, they're probably just not being as diligent with their training and their nutrition I'm so as diligent. they could be. Oh. Why not dial that up to 100% <laughs> first? Then you can make that decision. That's how I feel anyway. And if you want to commit and join me on a year-long journey to truly sure. dedicated lifting and eating, consider downloading my nutrition app, Macro Factor. We'll try it for two weeks for free to see if you like it first. And it's really like having me as your own personal nutrition coach Is it though? for a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost. We're about to hit 150,000 monthly users, which is pretty crazy. And we've gathered some incredible transformations Word from up. users of the app. Oh, like other diet apps, Macro Factor. You, you could tell that that last guy was already uh, And we've gathered some incredible transformations before. from users. Of yeah, he, he was a former. He looked like he looks like he was a former lifter. Uh, yeah, and just got a little out of shape. That's all. But yeah, the app. Unlike other diet apps, Macro Factory. Yeah, yeah, there's also something to be said about muscle maturity and muscle memory. That's like a real thing. So, you know, for me, like I've been sober for two years now. Uh, two years in November will be two years sober, uh, and I started working out again right when I got sober. Stop, stop drinking, um, and then uh, you know, just yeah, that that helps too if you stop drinking. Uh, and I got back to just about where I was before I went into my huge depression. So yeah. Uses science-based algorithms to tailor your calories and macros to your metabolism specifically. All you need to do is track your food and your weight, and the app will automatically update your nutrition up, each week. So I'll put a link to the free trial in the description box down below if you guys want to get started I with might, me. I might take and a look that's at it. it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the I video. Did. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Much obliged, sir. Uh, yeah, that was a fun video for me. Uh, <laughs> and I'm a sweaty. I'm a sweaty boy. Yeah, I, I don't uh, did, um, fault anybody for doing roids. Roids are, roids are fun. They make you bigger. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, they help, They work. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please like you and subscribe you down below. Uh, yeah, if you've got, it makes me feel good inside. It helps out the channel. Uh, if you've got any uh, suggestions for any videos, put them in the comments. It doesn't have to be like this kind of stuff. Could be. I'm really into anime and weeb stuff. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I don't <laughs> military things. I was in the Navy, so uh, CBs, hoorah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, and um, bye.